Mic check, 212, bitch. What's up, guys? This is DDP. It is a new day and another shot at the title. And on Feeling Dangerous today, we've got a few stories here to talk about. I'm not going to lie to you. The first two are actually really depressing. Like, the first one's not happy by any means. And then the next one just kind of is depressing. But they involve former Mavericks, and they are in the news right now. So it feels relevant to what we talk about here on this channel and within this community. So I'm going to talk about them, and I'm going to try and give them proper respect in the process of it before we then get on to some of the not depressing stories. But news is what news is. So first of all, Chandler Parsons, former Maverick, is facing potentially the end of his career. And while recent years have been rather forgettable for Parsons, this isn't insignificant for it because his career looks like it's ultimately being cut short by the recklessness of a drunk driver. On January 15th, Chandler Parsons was leaving the practice facility. He's now a member of the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, he was leaving the practice facility and driving home where he was struck uh, by another car, a drunk driver, it was part of a three-car accident on the highway, and in the accident, Parsons suffered what his uh, representation is basically calling permanent or severe and permanent damage, B traumatic brain trauma, torn labrum, and it sounds like multiple herniated discs, which are no joke. I've had a herniated disc before and a nearly herniated one as well, uh, L4, L5 specifically, and that is serious pain. To have that combination of injuries and the fact that he's, you know, into his 30s, I believe at this point or right around there, it's probably it for him. Like the they his representation even suggests that there is a good chance that he might not play again. This might be the end of his playing career, which is really a hard thing to accept for any athlete, but when it's not even something that you did, but rather the recklessness and irresponsibility of someone else, it's different. So I'm going to put up real quick the statement from his team on the screen. I'm going to read that as well. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the kind of context of Parsons in recent years and his time with the Mavericks and everything. So first you have Chris Hayes pointing out on Twitter, Parsons hires Morgan and Morgan after being struck by an individual who's charged with DUI, according to the attorney. Parsons suffered severe, multiple severe and permanent injuries, including a traumatic brain injury, disc herniation, and torn labrum. His return to play is unclear. Now, you see the start of the article, that, uh, not the article, uh, I see that the headline is over the top, let me hide that. Uh, not, it's not the article, it's the official statement here. Uh, I'll read along with that if for whatever reason you're having a hard time reading it. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta Hawks small forward Chandler Parsons has retained Morgan & Morgan, the nation's largest plaintiff law firm, law firm, following a January 15th auto crash in which he suffered multiple severe and permanent injuries, including a traumatic brain injury, disc herniation, and a torn labrum. Parsons was traveling home from practice shortly before 2 p.m. when he was struck by a driver who was arrested for drunken driving. Mr. Parsons' attorneys, Jack Morgan and Nick Pengaskis? Sorry if I just botched the hell out of that. Release the following statement. Morgan and Mor Morgan has been retained by Mr. Parsons to help preserve all of his rights and navigate the legal process on his behalf in the wake of this terrible automobile crash. Chandler was seriously injured in this crash, which should have never occurred. The at-fault driver created utter chaos on the roadway, needlessly endangering the lives of countless motorists. He now stands charged with DUI, admitted drinking, had alcohol in the car with him, passed out after causing a three-car crash at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday in a busy intersection, seriously injuring and potentially ending Mr. Parsons' career as a professional athlete. Chandler is having a difficult time accepting the consequences of the defendant's recklessness, reckless conduct on the roadway. Chandler was in peak physical condition at the time of the wreck. He is now working with a team of doctors to regain his health, and at this time, his ability to return to play is unclear. Our focus right now is on helping him make a full recovery while we also work to hold any and all parties responsible for the incident. This is uh, this is pretty serious stuff here in this case. 
Chandler Parsons, for the, those of you who maybe are more recent into the Mavericks fandom, and whether you followed because of Luka or KP, here's, here's the background on that. So he was drafted in the second round by the Houston Rockets and was a very promising young prospect as well. Now, when his rookie contract was coming to its end, Dallas actually managed to steal him away as a restricted free agent, which was a little bit of a... It, it was considered a very savvy move at the time because Dallas desperately needed young talent and while there was never really the belief that he was going to be a number one option it still was a move that was considered to be solid for the team in terms of building out a foundation and adding maybe a number two scorer in the case he had had moments in Houston very good moments as well uh, where I think at the time back when the NBA record for most threes in a game was 12 I think it's like 14 now he had 10 threes in a game with Houston, and I want to say it was something stupid, like 10 of 12 shooting from three. That part I'm not as uh, concrete on as far as my memory is concerned. But this was a good move for Dallas. Chandler Parsons had also been very instrumental in the recruiting of Dwight Howard from L.A. to Houston, which I know Dwight Howard and Houston ended up not getting them over the hump. By the way, they're still trying to do that. But it was still a significant addition, and Parsons was considered to be instrument very instrumental in that entire process so dallas brought him in and <laughs> I, I think him and cuban signed the restricted free agent contract literally in a club in dallas i could be wrong i can't remember the city but i know the contract was signed in a nightclub at midnight which is the most chandler parsons move ever and you know cuban now maybe not as much but early days cuban ownership that sounds kind of on par as well so Parsons signs the contract. Then you have the craziness. That season had a lot of hope, actually, because we're talking at this point the 14-15 season. You got Dirk. You got Monte. You just went to seven games last year, the year before that, um, against the Spurs in the first round. Spurs ended up winning the championship that year, beating the Heat. And then you make the trade to bring Tyson Chandler back. You get Tyson Chandler and Raymond Felton from the Knicks. So now you got Dirk. Chandler Parsons, Tyson Chandler, Monte Ellis, and we ended up signing Jameer Nelson as well, and we signed Al Farouk Aminu as well. So we had ourselves a pretty good crop of a team there. Like We were a very, very good, like best offense in the league, historically good offense, but we had some deficiencies. Even with Tyson Chandler back, we didn't have enough defense, and... We we didn't have point guard play. Those were our weaknesses. Jameer Nelson was a shadow of himself from his days in Orlando. And I know he came straight from Orlando, but I mean his best days in Orlando. And it just ended up not taking shape. So basically at the deadline, then that year, Dallas swings for the fences again, thinking that they're going to build about a three or four year window with a core of the four guys I mentioned, plus Rajon Rondo speared the entire thing through, you know, through the belly or whatever, dead on arrival. The entire spacing of this great offense was killed. You had two guys that couldn't be effective without the ball in their hands. Rondo and Carlisle butted heads nonstop. And it flamed out to the point where in that first round playoff series against Chandler Parsons' former team, the Houston Rockets, the Mavericks offense that could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody throughout most of the year suddenly had no chance. Chandler Parsons then in like a game... I think it was in the first game of the of the series, injures his, I want to say, left knee, and his season's done. He needs knee surgery. During that same series, we end up sending Rajon home with a undisclosed injury, which was then claimed to be a back injury. Really, they just sent him away because he was just completely uh, acting out and just killing anything the team had. Enough so that his entire team, I believe, voted, like the team voted against him getting playoff pay so that was withheld from Rajon Rondo like it was that crazy of a situation and that summer then brought a lot of promise we still had Chandler Parsons he was coming back off a knee injury and you know Rajon was gone but we still had hope we still had this perception that we are going to be able to build something we had also lost Monte Ellis and I believe I believe we lost Al Farouk Aminu as well in that time. But we managed to bring in, uh, well, the idea was going to be forming a big three then. 
not even really a big three, but a moderate three. Let's put it that way. Chandler Parsons, you still had Dirk balling out, but you were going to build around the acquisition of these three guys. You got Chandler Parsons, Wesley Matthews, and DeAndre Jordan. Now, Wesley Matthews, we didn't know back then. He was a quality veteran, and he had some moments here and there with Dallas, but he was never the same after his torn Achilles at the very end of his career in Portland. And as a result of that, that ended up not being near the acquisition we thought it would be. DeAndre Jordan, we obviously know what happened there, the whole emoji war thing and everything that came from his initial committal to Dallas and then going radio silent and a week later backing out at the last second before he could officially sign the paperwork and then staying with the Clippers. We know about all that. Parsons wasn't able to seal that deal to bring DeAndre Jordan to Dallas, even though they were friends, and that the three of them, Wesley, Chandler, and DeAndre, had all met and discussed the three of them forming uh, this new core for Dallas moving into the future. And it was supposed to be adding them, plus Dirk. Would have been much better basketball than we had for the next couple of years. But uh, obviously, I don't think at that point, if we had done that, I don't think that would have worked out, and I don't think we would have wound up where we are now with Luka and KP. So I'm going to say I prefer where we wound up. But all the same, it ends up not working out. You have DeAndre back out. The Mavericks get back to the playoffs again, win a game against OKC, but lose. Ultimately, not even really a chance in that series. And so Chandler Parsons, again, his season ended with another knee injury. And at this point, the Mavericks medical staff took a look at him. Parsons had opted out of the last year of his deal, making him a free agent. And the medical staff had looked at him and basically said, I wouldn't do it, bro. I wouldn't do it. I, I'm pretty sure that's a, a spot on Casey Smith uh, impersonation there. But basically said, nah, you, you can't. You can't. Like, this, this is too compromised at this point. Who wasn't afraid to give big money to Chandler Parsons was the Memphis Grizzlies, who gave him a four-year, $94 million contract, which was... I think the single worst contract that's been given out in maybe the last 10 years. Now, you could argue the Lakers' Tim Timothy Mozgov was worse. There were some, ooh, there were some bad ones. But uh, four for 94 for Chandler Parsons with a knee that was nowhere near right was really bad. For about two years there, he was viewed as the worst contract in the league. He could either barely play, or when he did play, he was he looked like he didn't belong on the court. He just physically wasn't right. And he looked like he was basically clinging to it. Like, the only reason he was still floating around in the league is because he was owed so much money, and the Grizzlies were hoping. They're like, well, we're not competing right now anyway, so hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to jettison his contract uh, as part of a trade to make something else happen. So that was the belief, that maybe they could do that. And that was the only reason he hung around in the league. I'll be completely honest with you. Now, before I before I go to this, uh, that same 4 for 94, because Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, pulled the biggest snake move in NBA, NBA history and went to the Warriors, the Warriors then could not retain Harrison Barnes. We gave that same 4 for 94 to Harrison Barnes. And needless to say, he was a much better investment than Chandler Parsons, although you know it didn't work out ultimately. He couldn't take that step to be a number one option for Dallas. So... That that is what it is. He he was the lead dog on a team that was barely keeping us any degree of afloat for a couple of years before we got Dennis and then got Luca and then Luca turned Dennis and Luca became Luca and KP and now here we are. I'll be honest though, I did not keep up with where Chandler Parsons had gone after the Grizzlies. I did not know he was in Atlanta until I saw this story. It, it's a really hard thing because even though as I said. His tenure with the Mavericks for two years did not go the way that we expected it to. I don't think a lot of people had it twisted and told themselves he was going to be another Dirk-like player, but I do believe that there was this consideration that he was going to be a significant piece that we had moving forward. And he showed some moments, some flashes, but ultimately his body broke down and it was the same knee both years. It just became too much of an issue. And for as hard as he's worked to try and resurrect his career... It's really, it, I mean, it is, it's it's tragic that this happened in this case because as hard as he worked, I don't doubt it. I mean, this is, you, you don't get this far doing it just because it's a paycheck, right? This is something that he dreamed of. This is something he fought for. And in the end, it was ripped away for, for I mean, it looks like for all intents and purposes, it very much might have been ripped away from him in this case. And it could, I mean, at least he's alive. He, he wasn't killed in the wreck. That's good. He, he wasn't uh, paralyzed or anything like that. That's all very good. 
But it is something that it's going to change his life and his career might be done as a result of that. And that's that's going to be hard for him to accept. And, you know, you just have to hope that his quality of life at this point, that he can heal well enough that even if his NBA career is done, his quality of life will still be rich enough because I think the guy is only in his early 30s. I want to say he's like 32. His body just betrayed him. He was only 25 when, we came, when he came to Dallas. So, yeah, he should be like right around 30, I guess, at this point. And that's that's what we're looking at at this point. Like, this guy is by no means an old man. His body just broke down, and now this happened to him. So, ah, you, you, hate, to, you hate to see it, and I don't mean that. And I know that phrase is used almost like a meme these days. But, like, sincerely, it is awful to see. And, you know, it might not have worked out for him here, but I will continue to wish Chandler Parsons all the best. Because this is not the kind of thing that anybody should ever have to go through, uh, period, regardless of who you are.